Hey everybody, this is Summer with Summerly Design Co. and I knit socks obsessively and design sock knitting patterns. This is the third video in my series on how to knit a basic sock. We are knitting from the I'm So Basic sock pattern, which can be found in my School of Sock library of free patterns and tutorials designed to help you learn how to knit socks. I will link this pattern in the description of this video, so if you haven't gotten it yet, you can go ahead and grab it. It's a free pattern, um, and it's just a really great intro to the anatomy of a sock and how to knit a basic sock. Today, in this third video, we're going to be going over the heel and gusset of a sock. In the first video, I talked about all the different materials that you need to knit socks. And in the second video, we went over how to knit the cuff and how to transition into the leg. Now our leg is knit and we are ready to go on the heel and on the gusset. Um, in this particular sock pattern, the basic sock pattern that I have, it uses a traditional heel flap and gusset. And a lot of knitters are a little like worried about that because it seems kind of complicated. Once you get the hang of it, it's really easy to do. It's my go-to heel. I love it. I think it's a really good sturdy heel. Um, it wears really well, especially if you plan on wearing your hand knit socks with shoes out into the world. Um, it just, it lasts a really long time. It's really durable. I really love it. There are a lot of other sock heels out there and I will definitely be doing tutorials for those as well. But I think this is a really good one to learn on. And I just think it's a great, great heel to have in your library. Most of the socks that I knit have a heel flap and gusset because it's so durable. Um, so I just think that's a really good one to learn with. And that's what we're gonna do today. So let's get that out of the way and let's look at our sock here. So we've already knit the leg. As I said in my previous video, my leg is six and a half inches long from the top of my cuff to where I've stopped working. That's a length that I love. That's great for me. You might like a shorter or longer um, leg and that's totally fine. You can knit it as long or as short as you want to. Um, but now we've gotten to where we are ready to do the heel. So if you follow the pattern, the first step that you had to do was to go ahead and knit across the first half of your stitches. I'm knitting the size medium, so for me that was 32 stitches. I've got 32 stitches on each needle here. Um, so I went ahead and I knit across the first 32, and now I'm on my second needle and I'm ready to do the heel flap on the second half of my stitches, these 32 stitches right here. If you look at a finished sock, basically all of these stitches right here are the front of your sock. I'll kind of open this up here. It's folded so crisply and neatly, but yeah, this is the front of your sock. And so those first 32 stitches that we just knit, that's the front of your sock. The second half of my stitches, the back 32, form the back of my sock. And that's where I'm going to knit my heel is right here. So when it says in the pattern, the second half of your stitches, that's what it's talking about right here, the back of your sock where you're gonna place your heel. So that's where we're at. I've knit across the front 32 stitches in my main color. I've now cut my main color in preparation to knit my heel across the back 32 stitches. And we're going to be knitting back and forth. We are no longer going to be knitting in the round for this portion. We will be knitting back and forth. So we'll be knitting one row, purling the other, um, to create our heel flaps. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to add in my contrast color. Woo, I just knocked the camera there. Sorry about that. And you do not have to use contrasting colors for your cuffs, your heels, or your toes. I just like to. I just think it looks really good. Um, so for a lot of my socks, I do. Put that out of the way. And I knocked the camera again. Oh my gosh. Okay, adding in our contrast color if I can get it to stick on there. Of course, whenever you're filming, again, you don't knit your best, I promise. Like I usually knit a lot better than this. All right, so we're gonna knit two, just to get that contrast color in there. Now this is the first row of our heel flap. So for the first row, we're gonna knit two stitches, and then we're gonna slip one, knit one, all the way across, okay? Whenever we slip, the yarn is in back, and we slip purl wise. So slip one and then knit one. Slip one, knit one. Slip one, knit one. Slip one, 
knit one. And we're just gonna keep doing this all the way to the end of the needle here. Just slip one, knit one. And again, slipping our yarn is in back and we are slipping purl wise, meaning we are inserting the needle into the next stitch as if to purl whenever we slip it. Knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one, and we'll just keep going. We're almost to the end, getting so close, and end, and you should always end on a knit one. If you did not end on a knit one, go back and look because you did something wrong. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna turn our needle over, and once again, this front, these first 32 stitches, they're just gonna hang out there and wait while we're knitting our heel flap. I keep hitting the camera with my glasses, by the way. Um, there's really, the way that I'm standing, I don't know if I can prevent it from happening. I'm really sorry. Okay, so now we are on row two. Rows two and three of your heel flap instructions are what you're gonna be repeating. You will never do row one again. Now that row one is done, we are done with row one. And from now on, we're just going to be repeating rows two and row three. So the first thing we're gonna do on our purl row is we are going to slip the first stitch. Now on your purl row, when you slip that first stitch, the yarn is going to be in front. So you're just gonna slip it. And then you're just gonna purl all the way across. No more slipping, just purl all the way to the end of the needle. Okay, I have now finished my purl row all the way to the end of the needle, and now I'm ready to start row three. So I'm gonna go ahead and just flip this over. And now we are ready to start row three of our heel flap. My yarn's a little bit tangled. Okay, so for row three, we're just going to slip the first stitch, yarn in back this time, we're knitting. So we're gonna slip the first stitch and then we are going to knit one, purl one, all, or I'm sorry, knit one, slip one, all the way across. So knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one, all the way to the end. And if you ever can't remember, did I just slip one or did I just knit one? It's kind of hard to tell because we've only got a few, we're only a few rows in, um, but your slip ones will be raised up um, and your knit ones will be kind of recessed in there. Um, again, it's a lot easier to see once you've knit a few rows, um, but you can already tell, you know, all of my slip ones are just raised up and then all of my knit ones are recessed. So slip one, knit one, and we're just gonna do this all the way to the end. And then we will be doing row two again because we're gonna be repeating rows two and three until our heel flap measures the desired length. Um, so again, row two is slip one, purl all the way across. Row three is slip one, knit one all the way across. Um, so yeah, really, really simple. Okay, that's the end of row three. I will turn and ready to do a row two again. Um, as far as the length goes, the pattern kind of tells you, depending on the size that you're making, how long your heel flap should be. I'm knitting the size medium, so I'll knit my heel flap until it measures two inches. Um, so look at the pattern, look at your corresponding size, and it'll tell you how long your heel flap should be. Once your heel flap reaches the desired length, you should end after you've done a row two. So after you've done a purl row, then you'll flip it over and we'll be ready to start the heel turn. All right, I have finished up on the heel flap. Um, according to the pattern instructions for my size, the size medium, my heel flap needed to be two inches long. Um, so I've got that. We are measuring at two inches and the heel flap was super easy, right? Like it's really, really easy to knit the heel flap. Um, not a whole lot of fun. Like I think heel flaps are a little bit tedious, but the heel turn, is where things like turn up. Like it's so fun. I love knitting heel turns and we're about to do that. Um, but anyway, so you, your heel flap should be the length that it's supposed to be according to the pattern instructions for your size. Again, mine's two inches for the size medium. Um, I'm keeping this contrast yarn attached because like I said, we're about to do the heel turn. 
and that means we're going to be creating this adorable little heel right here. Um, and this is so much fun. There, It's just so awesome seeing the heel kind of pop out as you knit it. Um, still going to be knitting back and forth on just this needle. Um, so again, these, these stitches right here, this these 32 stitches um, that make up the front of my sock, again, for the size medium, those are just going to, they're going to keep hanging out there. And we are going to be knitting back and forth in order to make our heel turn. Now you should have ended your heel flap after knitting a purl row. Um, so make sure that you knit a purl row and you are ready to start on a knit row. We are done slipping. We're not going to do any more slipping and knitting. And if you just heard a very loud thundering sound, that would have been my 13 year old son thundering down the stairs because 13 year old boys don't know how to walk downstairs. They only know how to stomp and run downstairs. Anyways, let's go ahead and get going with our heel turn. Um, we are still going to slip this first stitch. So we're gonna slip that stitch. And then what we're going to be doing is knitting exactly half the stitches we have here on our heel. I'm knitting the size medium, which means I've got 32 stitches for my heel flap. Half of 32 is 16. So that's what I'm gonna knit. The pattern instructions will tell you exactly how many to knit for your size. For my size, that's 16. So I've slipped one, now I'm gonna knit 16. Okay, I've now knit my 16 stitches and we are ready to start turning that heel. So the first thing that we are going to do, and again, this is all in the pattern instructions, is we are going to slip, slip, knit. So we're just gonna slip, slip, knit. The next stitch. And then we're going to knit one. And then we're gonna turn. Okay, now we're on the purl side. Now we are going to slip this first stitch and then we are going to purl five. And by slipping, it gets our working yarn where it needs to be so that we can, we can actually work here. So now we're going to purl five and that's the same for every size. One, two, three, four, five. Now we're going to purl two together. And purl one. And turn. We are going to once again, slip that first stitch. And now we are going to knit six. One, two, three, four, ooh, hit it with my glasses again, so sorry, five, six, okay. I realized I didn't have one of my lights on, so I just turned it on. <laughs> All right, so now we've knit six. Now we're ready to slip slit knit again. So we're going to slip Slip, knit. And knit one. Okay, now we're gonna turn again. Once again, we're gonna slip that first stitch. And then we are going to purl seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now we're gonna purl two together and knit one. And if you'll notice, as we're doing this, you keep, see how, you keep seeing how when we get up to this gap, this gap created when we slip slit knit or purl two together on the previous row, that's what we are working together on the next row. 
So when I purl two together, I close that gap. And then purl one, and then turn. And once again, we slip one. Now we're going to knit eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we've arrived at our gap again, as you can see. We're gonna close that gap by slip, slip knitting it. And we're going to knit one. And you are just going to keep repeating that, keep doing that. You turn, now we would purl nine on this row up to the gap, close the gap, purl one, turn, knit 10 to the gap, slip slit knit to close the gap, knit one, turn, keep doing that until you don't have any more heel stitches left to work. And you can already see that cute little heel is starting to pop out. So really simple. You just keep doing that until you've worked all the heel stitches. There's none left and you end up with this adorable little heel right here. And then we will be ready to start on the gusset. One more quick note before I finish knitting up this heel um, and teach you how to do the gusset. When I say use up all of your heel stitches, here's what I'm talking about. So I'm about to purl these two together. And purl one, and then I'll turn. But you notice how I've only got four stitches left on this needle. And so when I turn and then I knit across to my gap on this side and close that gap on this knit side. I'll only have four stitches left on that side. As you keep turning and knitting the gap closed, this these stitches on either end after the gap, you keep getting less and less. So when you've used up all your stitches, it means there's no more stitches. When, when you close the gap and knit one, you shouldn't have any left. Um, and that's how you'll know that you've worked all of your stitches. Okay, so I'm about to finish on my heel turn. I'm going to do one final slip slip knit here. Grab it. There we go. And then knit one, and that's it. I've used all of my heel stitches. And I'm where I need to be to start picking up my gusset stitches. Okay, so this is really important to pick up your gusset stitches successfully. When you finish turning your heel and you've used all your heel stitches, your needle should look like this. They should be pointing left and you should be looking at the right side of your work. So my needles are pointing to the left. I'm looking at the right side of my heel. That means I'm exactly where I need to be to pick up my gusset stitches. If when you finish your heel turn, your needles look like this, you are not in position to pick up your gusset stitches. If you are looking at the wrong side of your work, if your needles are pointing to the right, you cannot pick up your gusset stitches on this side. So you'll want to, you know, purl back across all of these stitches so that you can get in position to where your needles are pointing left while looking at the right side of your work. And then you'll be in perfect position to pick up your first set of stitches in order to knit the gusset. Now this is arguably the trickiest part of the heel flap and gusset. Up to now, it's been pretty easy. Knitting the heel flap was easy. Turning the heel, you know, was pretty easy. But now we are going to be creating this, the gusset, which allows our sock to curve this way to fit on our foot. Um, you can see this little line here on this side, and then we've got another little line here on that side. Those are simple decreases. We're just decreasing stitches. Um, knit two together or slip slip knit to create our gusset. So that's all it is, but it's definitely the trickiest part of knitting a basic sock. Once you get the hang of it though, it's like old hat. It's super easy to do. So that's what we're gonna do now is pick up those stitches. And if you'll remember, 
When we knit our heel flap, we always slipped the first stitch of every row that we knit, and that created these nice fat stitches along the side, and that's where we'll be picking up our gusset stitches from. And it's really easy to do because we've got these nice plump slip one stitches, so it's really easy to get your needle up under there to pick them up. So we're gonna be picking up stitches from this side of the heel flap, then we're going to be knitting across the front of our sock, the, the part of the sock that rests on top of your foot. Then we'll be picking up stitches on the other side of our heel flap and then knitting across the heel and we're good to go. We'll start doing our gusset decreases after that. But for now, what I'm gonna do is cut this uh, contrasting yarn because I'm ready to get my main, my main yarn again. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that I don't have my pretty snippy scissors because they disappeared, so I'm using these big <laughs> rusty kitchen scissors to cut my yarn. All right, so that's cut. We'll get that out of the way. I will grab my main color of yarn and then we will start picking up gusset stitches. All right, got my yarn ready to go. Okay, so to pick up a gusset stitch, all you're gonna do is just kind of take your needle, it's got all of our heel stitches here, and we are just going to slide the tip of that needle into the first big fat stitch here, like that. And then we're going to take our yarn, our main color yarn. Again, if you're knitting your socks all one color with no contrast, then you didn't have to cut your yarn and work new yarn in. So what I do is I take it like this, once I've looped it around my needle, and kind of pull on it tight, and then using your left hand, just take your fingers and just kind of push it over, and now there's a stitch. And then we just simply do that in every stitch down the side of our heel flap. For my particular size, it tells me to pick up 16 stitches down the heel flap, I can tell you right now, I don't count. I just pick up stitches down the heel flap because what we're gonna be doing later are gusset decreases. We're gonna be doing decrease stitches to get back to our target number. If you'll remember, we knit our leg with 64 stitches uh, if you're knitting the size medium. Obviously, if you're knitting the size small, large, or extra large, you have your own number that you've been, that you knit your leg in. But for me, for the size medium, I knit my leg in 64 stitches, and that's what I'll be knitting my foot in. And so will you. You'll be knitting your foot in the same number of stitches that you knit your leg. So we're going to be doing uh, decreases on either side of our heel flap to get back to that number after we've picked up all these stitches um, for the gusset. So I don't really count when I'm picking up stitches down the side because you're just gonna be doing decreases to get back to, in my case, 64. So I don't really worry about it. Um, that's never affected the fit or look of my sock. So it's not really a big deal. Um, so yeah, and there we go. That's the last of it. One thing I really love about knitting in a contrasting yarn is that I can see when I've reached the end. Like, okay, I've got one more here. And now I've picked up all the stitches on the side of my heel flap. Um, if I can get that last one. For the most part, it's pretty easy. Occasionally you get a stitch that just doesn't want to be picked up. And this is one of those times. There we go. All right, now I'm just gonna flip this over and we are ready to knit across the front of our sock. Um, and I should add, I probably should have said this earlier, um, but according to the pattern, your pattern should tell you how many stitches you should have ended up with after you turned the heel before we started picking up gusset stitches. I should have mentioned that earlier. Um, in my case, I'm knitting the size medium, so I should have ended up with 21 stitches from my heel um, after I turned my heel. So your pattern, you know, the pattern will also tell you how many heel stitches you should have ended up with for your particular size before we started picking up gusset stitches. But again, these numbers, like it, you're going to be doing decreases to get back to your target number for your foot and one or two stitches off is not going to affect the fit of your foot. So it's not something that I hugely worry about. All right, so now magic loop, get the front of the sock stitches up, pushed up there and then pull this needle out 
And then we're just simply going to knit across the front of our sock. Again, just knitting and stockinette, just straight up knitting. Um, and once you get past the gusset, you're just gonna be straight up knitting all down your foot. Um, the gusset really is the trickiest part of knitting a sock. And once you get past it, it's like such a huge relief. But once you do a couple of pair and you really get used to it, it's no big deal. Like you, you really do. It just kind of becomes second nature. It's really easy to do a gusset. Okay, I have now knit across the 32 stitches across the top of my foot. Um, the stitches that'll go on top of my foot. Um, again, knitting the size medium, so 32 stitches for me. If you're knitting a different size, you'll obviously have a different stitch count there. Um, I've picked up these stitches on this side of my heel flap, knit across the front. Now I'm ready to pick up these other stitches. Before I do, I'm going to place a marker to tell me where to do the decreases on this side. Um, so we'll go ahead and stick a marker in there. And then let's pick up the other set of stitches from this side of our heel flap. And once again, you're just getting that needle up under those big fat slip stitches. And then wrapping your yarn as if to knit and then just using your fingers to kind of pull the stitch up over. Really, really simple. And again, the pattern tells you how many to pick up on the side if you like to know exactly how many stitches you have and how many you should have. When it comes to this part, I don't really worry about it. I just pick up all the stitches on the side and then we're gonna be decreasing them here in a minute to get back to our target number. So I don't really worry about being accurate because again, one or two stitches is not going to affect the fit of your sock. So I don't count, but you are certainly more than welcome to. Um, Picking those up almost to the end. All right. Now picked up all the stitches on that side of the gusset. So all the stitches have been picked up. Phew, past that hard part. Just straight up knitting from here on out. Um, that really is the trickiest part. So I'm gonna pull this back needle out. Now we're gonna scooch these stitches up onto our needle and we are just going to knit. We're gonna knit all the way down to the end of our needle and then we'll be back on the front of the sock for the start of round one of gusset decreases. So yeah, we're knitting across our heel stitches now. We've picked up all the stitches we need to pick up. Now it's just straight knitting with some decreases thrown in there to get back to our target number. All right, I have knit around and now I am back at the start. I am back at the beginning of my sock, ready to start round one of my gusset decreases. We've picked up all of our gusset stitches. Now we're actually going to start getting rid of them. We need to get back to our target number. Again, I'm knitting the size medium. My leg was 64 stitches and my foot's gonna be 64 stitches. Um, I've got a lot more than 64 stitches on my needles right now and I need to get back to 64. So I'm simply going to be doing two decreases every other round in order to get back to my 64 stitches. So the first thing we're gonna do, this is round one, of gusset decreases. We're just going to knit across our foot again. And again, for me, that's 32 stitches. If you're knitting the size small, large, or extra large, you will have a different number. Your pattern will, will guide you there and tell you how many stitches you have. So we're just going to knit all the way across until we get to our marker. That's going to be our first decrease where that marker is that we placed earlier. Okay, I have now knit across the top of my sock all the way to this marker here, and now we are ready for our first gusset decrease on round one of the gusset decreases. So I'm gonna slip that marker, I'm going to knit one, and then I'm going to slip, slip, knit. And 
and that is the first of our two decreases for this round. Now I am going to just knit all the way to three stitches before the end of my round, and then I will do my second gusset decrease. So I'm gonna finish knitting the stitches on this needle, and then I'm going to knit all of these stitches, and then right here, these three stitches, this is the end of the round. Um, so I'm gonna knit all the way to these three stitches. That'll be the end of my round, and I'll do my second decrease there. Because here's the top of my sock. That's the beginning of a new round. That's the beginning of the round, so that's gonna start the next round. This right here is the end of my round. So I'm gonna go ahead and knit across all these stitches until I get to the last three. Okay, I've now knit across all my stitches to the end of the round. I've got three stitches left on the end of this round. So when you reach the end of the round, last three stitches, just gonna knit, knit two together, knit one, boom, you're done with the decrease round. That's round one, decrease round. You did two decreases, and you did a decrease on either side of the front of your sock. Remember, this is the top of the sock, so there's a decrease here, and now a decrease there. Um, your next round, you're just gonna knit even with no decreases. So round two, knit even, no decreases. You're just gonna repeat those two rounds over and over again. So you'll have a round with two decreases, then a knit round, then a decrease round, then a knit round. Um, and as you can see on the finished sock, you can see where those decreases are happening. Here's a line of decreases, and there's a line of decreases on either side of the front, the top of my sock. Um, so that's where your, your decreases are at, okay? As far as the number of decreases to do, what you're trying to do is get back to your target number. Again, for the size medium, that's 64. So I'm just gonna keep doing those round one and round two over and over until I get to 64 stitches. And usually what I'll do is, you know, when I've done several rounds, I'll kind of count and see where I'm at. And so I might count and be like, okay, I'm, I've got 72 stitches on my needle, so I still need to do a few more rounds to get back down to 64. If you ended up with an odd number of stitches, um, you'll need to do one extra decrease round with just one decrease. So let's say I count my stitches, I think I'm done, and realize, okay, I've got 65 stitches on my needle. Um, I would just do one more decrease round and just do one decrease. So like, you know, just do one more slip slit knit and then I would not do the knit two together and that would put me at 64. So if you ended up with an odd number after picking up your gusset stitches, no biggie, you'll just do one extra decrease round and you'll just do one decrease on that round instead of two to get to your target number. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, for our gusset, I'm just going to keep repeating those two rounds. I'm gonna knit around now, plain, no decreases, and then I'll do a decrease round. Then knit around plain, then a decrease round, and just keep doing that um, over and over until I get back to my target number of 64 for the size medium. And once again, refer to your pattern. It'll lay all that out for you, tell you how many stitches you need to get down to. It'll tell you how many stitches you needed to end up with after doing your heel turn. It does tell you a number to pick up on the gusset stitches on the side to pick up your gusset stitches. Again, I don't usually pay attention to that myself. I just pick up stitches along the side and I get what I get. Um, but of course you can always follow that. So we'll keep doing that. Once we're finished with our gusset decreases, we'll be onto the foot and it is smooth sailing to the end of the sock from here on out. So I will be back really quickly um, to show you what your sock should look like once you finish your gusset decreases. And then, man, we'll be ready for the foot. Okay, I have finished all of my gusset decreases. I am now back at my target number for the size medium of 64 stitches. Um, so all of my decreases, you can see that neat little line there on that side and on that side. All gusset decreases are done and now I'm ready to knit the foot. 
Before I start knitting the foot, I need to rearrange my stitches. We want it to where we've got half our stitches on one needle and half our stitches on the other. And right now mine are still uneven from when I was doing my gusset decreases. So that's really easy to fix. Basically from the start of your round here up to your marker, for me, that's 32 stitches um, because again, I'm knitting the size medium. So half my stitches are 32. So from the beginning of your round to your marker should be half your stitches. So all you wanna do is take these stitches that are on the other side of your marker and get them over to this side. So I'm just gonna move my cable way down and then just work, work those over there. And then there we go. Now I've got 32 stitches on this needle and 32 stitches on my back needle. So I'm even again, and now I can start knitting my foot. The foot is super easy. You are just going to be knitting in stockinette, knitting every single round all the way until you're ready to start your toe decreases. I always start my toe decreases whenever I uh, my work gets to the very tip of my pinky toe. You'll see in the pattern that there's an illustration of a foot with a line that shows you where I stop knitting my foot in preparation for my toe decreases. If you are knitting these socks as a gift for someone else or you can't try them on very easily, um, the Craft Yarn Council of America has guidelines for how many length and inches you should knit the foot of your sock. And I've included that information inside the pattern. So you can use that as reference. Um, which is really handy if you're if you're gift knitting especially with magic loop it's fairly easy to try on the sock as you go so as you're knitting the foot just try it on occasionally and as soon as your work this line right here reaches the very right at the tip of your pinky toe that's when you'll be ready to stop knitting the foot and you'll be ready to start knitting the toe decreases so that's it for this video we've knit our heel flap, our heel turn, and our gusset. We're ready to knit the foot. And on my next video, I'm going to show you how to decrease the toes and shape our toes. Um, you can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Ravelry. You can hear my dogs growling in the background. And you can find me on Pinterest. And I will leave all that information at the end of this video. And I will also link everything in the description of this video, including where you can find this free pattern for the I'm So Basic sock pattern. So I'll see you guys next time when it's time to shape the toes.